Hey everyone and welcome to another day in Crozarian's Den. I am of course your host Crozarian and today's video as you can see is going to be a little different. Today we're going to be looking into the PlayStation beta software update uh, with the 1440p resolution and some other features. So let's see. I haven't read the full list of features that are going into this so let's find out together and see what Sony is up to. Update. All right. System software beta program. Important notices for beta program users. To help improve system software quality, report the details of any unidentified errors you encounter during the beta program in accordance with the participation outline. Fair. If you experience unexpected issues, you can restore your system software to the latest official release version before the beta program ends. It's recommended that you back up your important data before installing the beta program version so you can return your system to its prior state. I believe I already have backed up my data. All users on your PS5 console can update the system software from the beta program version to a later beta version or restore to the latest official release version. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's look at what features are going into this. Main features in this system software update. In the game library, you can now create custom game lists to better organize your games. That should have already been included, but better late than never. You can create your game list within the game library by selecting the Your Collection tab. Select games to add to your game list, then decide what to name it. That was in the PlayStation 4, now that I remember. Why is it taking so... Because I didn't even notice that. Because I didn't use that feature in the PlayStation 4, but I do know about it. Because my younger brothers use it. Why wasn't that just standard for the PS5? We've updated the following for the Game Help feature. Game Help now informs you when there is help available on both PS5 and mobile via PlayStation app. You can adjust whether the Game Help notifications are displayed on PS5, select Settings, Notifications, Game Help. On PlayStation app, select Settings. Push notifications, game help. 1440p HDMI video output is now supported, which it should have been from the start. Before use, run a test to see if your HDMI device supports 1440p output by going to settings, screen and video, video output, test 1440 output. I am a firm believer that this should have been set from the start. If you know me, you know I, I'm a big gaming supporter. I support both Xbox, PlayStation, um, Nintendo. If it makes video games and they're good, I support it. But Sony has been slacking on this generation with the console. I love the console. I love the console far better than the Xbox console because mine has yet to break and I've had to replace the Xbox console numerous times. But as far as software goes, and actual support for when it is working, PlayStation is slacking on this one. Other updated features. We've, pre we've updated the following in the game base. You can now request party members to start share screen to watch their gameplay. Go to the voice chat card, select the party member you want to send the request to, and then select request share screen. Not a feature I'm gonna be using, I've rarely ever used share screen, only when me and a few buddies are playing online, uh, fighting games online, and one of us isn't playing and they're just sharing the screen. So I won't get a lot of use out of this, but maybe you guys will. You guys who do use share screen, do you think this is a good addition or not? Just let me know in the comments below. When you join a party and a party member is playing a game that you can join, you will now receive a notification. You can now join the game directly from the notification. Wasn't that already a thing? Was that a thing? I don't remember. I don't remember. I remember joining directly from notifications before, but I think that was just the invites. Eh, another feature I probably won't make use of and actually might seem annoying because I don't want a notification every time a party member plays a game that I can join. Because when I'm in parties, we're generally all playing our own game most of the time. And so whenever they switch games, I don't want a notification telling me, hey, you could join this game. That 
will be annoying to me. But let me know if you will actually take use of this feature and if you appreciate it. When you receive a message, you can now view the sender's profile by selecting the message and pressing the options button. Meh. We've updated the following for friend request. When you accept a friend request in the received list, you can now view your fr new friend's profile in accepted request. Okay. I don't see why that wouldn't have been a thing in the first place, but hey, it is what it is. In the game based card, you can now send stickers and voice messages to your groups. Okay. There's more. The following features are added to game hubs. In progress, activities can now be shown prominently at the top of the game hub to make it easy and as fast. Oh, to make it as easy and as fast as possible to get back to where you left off. Hmm. Not gonna say that's beneficial yet until I actually test it out. I don't have a problem getting back to a game that I've, you know, suspended, but maybe some people have. If a game help is available for an activity, the view hints button will appear. Okay. In the videos, in the videos based on your recent gameplay section, you'll see labels for why the videos are recommended for you, such as fast play, high score, or top performance. Okay, I can see that being useful to some people. To me, who just want to see, you know, how certain things are done, or obviously see the highest score and blah blah blah. But I can actually see people using this. Not saying I would probably use it, but I can see some of my friends using that feature. While using the web browser, you can now select between two types of zoom functions. Wait, I've never used a web browser on my PlayStation, ever. I forget they have one. <laughs> okay. Never use it on my Xbox either. I just don't use my browser on consoles because I use my consoles for games, not browsing. Zoom lets you increase the size of elements on the page while adjusting their layout so everything fits without having to scroll left and right. I think we all know what zoom is. And magnify increases the size of everything on the page without layout adjustments. The maximum zoom and magnification rate is now 500%. We've organized the 3D audio settings. Okay, I might actually be interested in that one. These settings are now under 3D audio for TV speakers and 3D audio for headphones and settings sound. You can now listen and compare the difference between 3D and stereo audio on the same screen. Okay. I have used 3D audio before, but that was a long time ago. I don't remember if it was actually good or not. <laughs> Voice command. Voice command, a feature that I have recently started using. Voice command now supports searching for content in YouTube using voice. From anywhere on the PS5, including during gameplay, you can say, hey, PlayStation, search for blah, blah, blah to YouTube. The YouTube app will open and relevant search results will be shown. Currently, use voice command is only available in English for players with PSN accounts in the US and UK. I might actually take advantage of that because I, like I said, I have recently started using the voice command. Eh, I see why I don't use it because I, I'm just old school, I guess, and I just type what I want to search for. But the voice command feature is, is, is a neat feature. Um, I can see a lot of people appreciating that update. The way you enter text using voice input has changed. Previously, if you had the screen reader turned on, you had to wait for the instructions to be read aloud before speaking into the controller to enter text using voice input. Now you can skip the instructions by pressing X. Skip instructions is always a good feature. Always. Skip is always good. <laughs> the following improvements have been added to the screen reader feature. When controller button shortcuts for on-screen buttons are displayed, the screen reader now reads them aloud. Okay. Custom button assignments are now enabled in the passcode input screen. We've updated the DualSense wireless controller device software to improve stability. Okay, eh, I mean, I guess. 
I don't know who would actually take advantage of that. System software limitations. The beta program has certain limitations. Be sure to read the limitations below before using. Fair. In party, share screen requests can be sent and received only between players who are participating in the PS5 system software beta test. That's okay. I would have expected that anyway. Uh, caution when restoring to the latest official release version. Note the following before restoring your system software to the latest official release version. After restoring the su system software to the latest official release version, some games might not work correctly. If you experience any issues with the game, delete it and then install it again. If you install the latest official release version before the beta program ends, some of your settings and the order of content on your home screen will be reset to default. Also, some of your notifications will be deleted. All right, so just be careful when going back. You're going to run into some bugs. Fair. Service and repairs. If your PS5 console is in need of service, restore the system software to the latest official release version before requesting service. Before requesting service, make sure to remove your M.2 SSD. Oh no, I have to take out the screw again? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just poking fun at people who complained about that. If you request service for your PS5 console during the beta program, the system software on your console might be restored to the latest official release version during the servicing process. Okay, let's update. <clears throat> All right, everyone, and we are back from the update. Now, one thing I did realize during the update is that I won't be able to fully test out the voice feature because HDCP settings won't let me go to YouTube or HBO Max or anything like that. I also won't be able to test out the joining feature for the friends list as my friends are playing online games right now. Um, I did check that out. They're not playing anything online, so I won't be able to test that feature out either. But the main two things I do want to speak about uh, coming out of this update is the gaming library feature for creating a folder and the 1440p. Two things that should have been in the system from day one. The voice command feature, eh. I can live without it. I don't need it. The web browser feature, I'd never use the web browser on any console whatsoever. I've never have. It's never been a selling point or a selling feature for any console that I've ever owned. I don't get a console to search the web. I have a phone and I have a computer. I don't need to search on my console. But the gaming library feature, let's actually see your collection gaming list something as simple as this being overlooked when it was in the previous generation is in simple words dumb like why why overlook this yes it seems like a small thing but it's a small thing that's big for a lot of people I personally don't use this feature, but I know a lot of people that do, including my younger brothers and a few friends who love having folders set for their games so they don't have to constantly search through hundreds of games to find the one that they want to play. They can just go to their folder and bam, it's there. What am I in the mood for today? That type of thing. That, as small as a feature as this is, this is big for a lot of people and it's a slap in the face that it's coming out now when it should have been in the console on day one. Now, the next thing that's another slap in the face is the 1440p. Should have been in the console. You should have pit 1440p at 120 hertz before you pit in 4K, but it makes the console feel like it was rushed. And I know I'm not the only one who, who has felt like that. As much as I love my PS5, you got to be able to criticize the things you love. And the PS5 has been slacking on a lot of things. Granted, they're moving in the right direction now and better late than never. But still, for those of us who got one when it came out on day one, for everyone still looking to get one, the fact that these features are coming out now is still a little slap in the face. Uh, let's see. 1440p... 
I can test it. Okay, let me test it real quick. I know my monitors can do it, but let's test it out. Because I think my monitors can run 4K 60, if I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty sure they run 4K 60. Actually, I know they run 4K 60, because that's the reason I bought them. Yes. Yes. And yes. Congratulations, your HDMI device supports 1440p for these video output settings. All right. Let's actually change the resolution to 1440p. I know this might have, this is going to have a boost to some games that can't run 4K 60 consistently on the PS5. Now, if you're like me and don't truly care for 4K, because I don't truly care for 4K 60, 4K 120, I really don't. Um, 1440 is what I'm accustomed to playing at anyway. And 4K is not a selling point for me. It's really not. Our games can run in 4K 60, yeah. But is your game fun? Is the gameplay fun? Is it smooth? I don't care what your resolution is. If the game sucks, then the game sucks. So the resolution and 4K stuff has never been a big selling point. But it is appreciative when companies put in that extra feature or that extra effort to make it run at those higher resolutions at higher frame rates. So let's give it a quick test. Let's try first party game Returnal first. I haven't played this game in so long. I just want to get to combat. Just let me get to combat. That's all I want. All right, let's go. Let's get to some combat. Ah, nope, already dead. God, I told you it's been a while since I played this game. <laughs> All right, can't shoot that. I just want to shoot stuff. Let me shoot something. I don't want a gun. You know what? Yes, I do want a gun. Hold on. Open. Give me that. I just want to shoot. I just want to shoot. There we go. Okay. This game still feels solid. But it's, again, it's the first party game, so it better feel solid at 1440 when it was designed for 4K, right? Right? That's what we're saying. I don't know what you are, but let's go. All right, all right. Gameplay still feels good. I'm not trying to actually live here, so if I die, I die. Oh no! Something's gonna get me. Don't do it. Don't do it. All right. Gameplay is still solid. No frame drops or anything like that. No stuttering. Nothing to make this any less pleasant than it already is. I mean, not to say that this game isn't pleasant, but because I actually love this game and I need to get some friends on here to do co-op with this game. But for right now, gameplay, solid, still good. 
now. One more room. Actually, one more combat and one more combat room and then we will move on out or not. What am I supposed to do here? All right, well, never mind. We're not going anywhere. Yeah, we are. Nope. 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 No. I don't know who you think you are. Let's go. All right. Woo! You almost had me. All right. All right. Okay. 1440, fine. Gameplay, fine. Resolution, all that good stuff. It's all good. Now, let's run a third party game and see exactly what happens. Uh, you know what? Let's run Bright Memory because the PlayStation was already struggling a little bit behind the Xbox series for Bright Memory anyway. So, let's see how 1440 changes things. Because I have recently beaten this. So, this will be more... I can do a more... Accurate comparison. Let me just make sure the settings are right. These things off. High frame rate on. On. There we go. Motion blur. Let's lower that a little bit. And selected scene. I think it's this one. Starts me right off in the action. Now, as I said, this game was already lagging on the PS5 behind the Series X, so I'm going to see how 1440p changes that. Can I skip this? I don't know. Yeah. Alright. Okay. Shelia, this is Wake. I'm headed to your coordinates now. What's the situation? I'm doing alright. Okay. I'll contact you again later. Alright, 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 alright. Shelia, any anomalies with the black hole? I can already see... Things not holding up as well. The theory of relativity is the greater the mass of an object. The more it slows down, the more it slows down. That means the time in that area must have been fixed several hours ago. Alright. Alright. Gameplay is smooth. I do see a little bit of screen jittery going on here Actually. that I saw that you saw that too I know you did Shelly, I know you guys saw that several hostiles headed your way so it looks like even in 1440 the PlayStation still has problems with this game looks that way
magnetic field is unstable. Mm. I can't get a lock on your signal. Okay, so 1440 doesn't do a lot for bright memory. Because if I recall, those same stutters were in when I was playing it on 4K. Or whatever resolution it was letting me play it at. So that didn't do too much for that, for the third party game. Uh, let's try one more. Let's try Resident Evil 2. Or do I want to try Elden Ring? Uh, let's try Resident Evil. We'll try Resident Evil to see how this performs at 1440p. I have a feeling this won't have any kind of problem whatsoever because Resident Evil has never had a problem, at least for me, while playing. So, optimal experience for a third-party game. I'm not going to talk down to it so much for Bright Memory because Bright Memory isn't a super polished game to begin with. But that doesn't excuse the fact that the PlayStation 5 was lacking, is slagging behind on the Xbox Series. And even in 1440, it still had some stuttering issues. So let's continue. Where was I before? Oh, yeah, here. Yeah, I was just playing this for fun earlier today before I got my beta code. Oh, you know what? Graphics, let me see if they're even set for this. High frame rate mode on. That's really all I can do, huh? HDR mode is on. All right. Probably shouldn't have wasted that bullet, but oh well, who cares? If I get eaten, I get eaten. Hey! Leon? Claire! Hold on, I'll be right there. Okay. I know this is 1440 and so I can actually see the difference when it drops from 4K to 1440. Claire. It's so nice to see you. How are you doing? Alright. I'm not worried about the cutscene, I'm worried about the gameplay. Let's go. Hey zombie. Bye zombie. Um, don't eat me, please. Don't eat me. Ah, you got so close. I mean, it runs as I expect it to, which it better. All right, I'm going to take this guy and just go blow everyone up. Who wants it? Hey. Get out of here. He's, get, die already. Alright, so let's go through here. Oh, I didn't pick up the key. I'm such a dunce. Well, not that I care about that anyway. 1440 Resident Evil 2. Great. Still good. Um, smooth. No stuttering. Nothing of that nature. I mean, it runs as you would expect. It runs as you would expect from the PlayStation 5. Returnal runs as expected from the PlayStation 5. I'm going to go through one more room just to see because you never trust it at the beginning. That's one thing I've learned from all my years of playing games. Never trust the game for the first 10 minutes. Don't trust it. Well, five minutes. Oh, 
Hey, buddy. Goodbye, buddy. Hey, Grody. Goodbye. All right. Now, looking around the environment, nothing looks off. Game still looks good. No complaints. Oh. Hey. Stay down for me. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Smooth. As always. Nothing wrong. Not even with spraying bullets everywhere. All right. Good job. I don't know why I like to just quit my games before I go back to the home menu. So, the overview I have of this game so f of this update so far, the two main features I'm I'm worried about and focused on is the game library and the 1440. Again, both features should have been part of the system on day one. System feels like it was rushed, especially with the stuff coming out now. 1440 operates great, except for in Bright Memory, but again, the PlayStation 5 was already having a problem with that game in the first place. Resident Evil 2 ran fine. Return of first party game ran fine. I'm pretty sure all the I'm pretty sure all the first party games will run fine. I'm pretty sure actually that most games will run fine. Bright Memory is an exception because it doesn't seem optimized to begin with. And the feature with the gaming library, again, come on PlayStation, that should have stayed in since the PlayStation 4. What are you thinking? Now, voice command feature does I can't use it because of the HDCP settings. It takes me to YouTube like it's intended to, like it said it would. And the party feature, I can't test right now. But let me bring something up. The notifications about your friends playing a game that you can join, I actually do not like that. I don't need to be told when I can join someone's game. If I want to join someone's game, I'll ask them, can I join? Or they'll send me an invitation if they want me to. I don't need a notification to tell me, hey, your friend's playing this game, try and join. No, that's annoying. So I'm gonna be turning those notifications off most likely because I don't wanna to have to deal with that. But overall view, the update is an update that shouldn't have had to be an update. Everything in this update should have been part of the console when it dropped. All right, guys, sorry this has been a bit of a jumbled mess. I've been wrestling with this update since I heard about it because again, features that should have been part of the system since day one, it's, it's annoying. It's really annoying and frustrating when you adore something and it does good things, but the things it improves upon aren't things that should need to be improved upon. It should be things that have been part of it from release. Like, give me some new features that we haven't had yet, or improve upon features that we need improved upon like consistent frame rates at 4K, which you were toting about. You know, let's improve upon that, not introducing lower resolution to give us higher frame rates because you can't make the higher frame rate consistent with the higher resolution. <sighs> Sorry for that little ramble. This is Crozaring signing off. Until the next video, you guys take care of yourselves.